Hi everyone, welcome to a simple breakdown of the UK Constitution in four parts. Now throughout this video, you may see some asterisks, but you shouldn't worry because they only signify terms or concepts that will be later explained. First of all, what is a constitution? A constitution establishes rules and principles that govern a country and sets out the division of governmental activities, essentially outlining which structure will perform which task. It reflects the power relationships between various institutions, how each department is dependent upon or independent of operations of others. A constitution also places limitations upon powers of rulers and guarantees the rights of the ruled, like imposing constraints on the state's authority and listing freedoms of individuals and benefits to those who are entitled from the state, as well as offering protection to the minorities and individuals' freedom. It is important to remember that all constitutions contain a mixture of written and unwritten rules. Characteristics of a constitution. This generally refers to the various forms of a constitution. A codified constitution usually came after a huge political upheaval, like the U.S. after its independence and France after World War II. In a codified constitution, all major principles underpinning the political system is brought into one single document, like the U.S. Constitution. There is also the presence of fundamental or higher laws, which are laws that are made deliberately hard to amend to protect the rights of the people, such as the first ten amendments in the U.S. Constitution. Different to a codified constitution, there is an uncodified constitution. This is one feature of the UK Constitution where many of the laws, rules, and principles, no matter written or unwritten, are not collected into one single document. This is a fairly uncommon feature which only Britain, New Zealand, and Israel adopt. An uncodified constitution often relies upon conventions that are not even legally binding, and its constitutional laws enjoy the same status as ordinary ones, reflecting an absence of fundamental laws. In a unitary constitution, power concentrates in one single central government, like the one in the UK. This form of constitution is more suitable in smaller countries with no significant ethnic, linguistic, or religious differences, whereas in the federal constitution, there is a division between federal government and regional units like the states in the U.S. and the federal government. The powers and functions of the central authority and regional units are also clearly defined in a written constitution, such as in the U.S. The federal government does not have the right to get rid of the states, nor are the states allowed to change the constitution. A flexible constitution is rare and can be altered by a lawmaking process with a simple majority. This is another feature of the UK constitution. Due to its uncodified nature where rights are not entrenched, it allows more flexibility. But it is important to note that some codified constitutions still show some flexibility. For example, the US Supreme Court has the ability to interpret the constitution. A rigid constitution is where procedure for an amendment to the constitution is deliberately made difficult. However, it should still be noted that some uncodified constitutions have been resistant to change, like in the British constitution, the principle of parliamentary sovereignty can be dated back to the 17th century. In the previous slides, the word entrenchment actually refers to a firm establishment and protection of the constitution, where no change can be made without due consideration and discussion. In the U.S., an amendment to the first ten amendments require a supermajority, so two-thirds of congressional support. Interestingly, the British Constitution comprises an accumulation of traditions, customs, conventions, presidents, and acts of parliament, which serves as a framework within which those who exercise power must operate, and its origins can be traced back to the period after Norman conquest in 1066. But so far, there has been no attempts made to collate constitution and codify its various rules and conventions. In a constitution, there is also checks and balances in place to ensure that no one has the ultimate power and to balance out influences. This is often referred to the separation of power, which includes horizontal and vertical separations. It sets clear limits on governmental power and avoids power concentration on one person or a small group of people, basically preventing one person from working on more than one branch at a time. It is separated horizontally into three branches, the executive, legislative, and judiciary, then vertically between different branches of government such as states and federal government.